Thanks for joining us. I'm Cody Holmyoke. Today we devote our entire broadcast to what we like to call heart of the matter conversations, a chance to sit down and really get to the heart of the issues affecting our community. We have a lot to talk about in our first conversation with Kansas City, Missouri Mayor Quinton Lucas from education to development. But we begin with a frank discussion on violent crime plaguing Kansas City. Thanks for having us. Great to be here. Uh, Mayor, we're on pace for another one of Kansas City's deadliest years. Yep. You took office in August 2019. What isn't working here? How does the community try to make this work, try to get violent crime down in our city? You know, I think it is fair to say that we are not anywhere near where we want it to be. It is still my goal we get below 100 homicides per year. We are not on that path. I think a few things that we need to try to do and enhance. Step one is making sure that we are preventing people from getting into a life of crime. We have to continue to expand our efforts on conflict resolution, on working with young people, on getting them opportunities, our teenagers and others. That's a key step of what we have to do. But it isn't just an either or. We do need more police officers in Kansas City. This year we have not seen us be able to fill police officer recruiting classes anywhere close to where we needed to be. City Council funded classes of roughly 40 to 60 people. We're getting classes of about 18 in each at least of the first two classes of the year. Why do you think that is? You know, I think it's a tough time for us to, to be in this game of uh, public safety. It is a tough time to get people who want to be in those types of roles for whatever reasons. I think it's not actually unique to policing. We've seen it in fire departments, and city hall, and so many others. And so I think for me, what's most important right now is making sure that we share that, yes, we do find our rank and file officers to be exceedingly important and necessary, that we need more. We're continuing to enhance our efforts to recruit women, enhancing our efforts to recruit people from Kansas City originally. And, and then something else that I think I've really tried to do. It is, it's not hiding anything to note that there have been political debates and discussions over the last several years. Something that I've always tried to say is, even if I disagree with the actions of our board of police commissioners, because I remind you that here in Kansas City, the police board is mainly appointed by the governor of Missouri. Even where we have disagreements, even where there are disagreements perhaps with the police chief, I always stand with our rank and file officers who are out there really fulfilling the policies that we create for them. But what's most important is that we share with them, no matter what the political debates are, we're going to pay them fairly, we're going to continue to try to increase salaries, we're going to make sure that they're taken care of. But you look at that in policing, you look at making sure that we're re reaching out to young people and we're invested in mental health, I think we'll start to see us turn the page here in Kansas City. I mean, the police department's one prong of this, right? The yeah. community is the other That's prong. Right. Uh, you've been to the White House uh, this year a couple yeah, of times. a few times, yeah. uh, And recently there for the signing of the bipartisan uh, gun legislation, that went into law, uh, biggest gun legislation we saw passed by Congress in nearly 30 years. Yes. Will that make changes here in Kansas City? What would you like to see happen? You know, it, it can make changes here in Kansas City. One of the most important steps that it, it, they've had was making sure that we were invested in mental health in our communities and in school security. Both of them have been substantial issues with mass shootings throughout 2022 and sadly the year before and the year before that we're seeing in more areas, whether they're elementary schools, parades, anything under the sun. And in Kansas City, we have not been immune to shootings in our entertainment districts and certainly on the streets of Kansas City regularly. So I think first, crisis intervention, something that tells people in crisis that, that there is a way to help. But then secondarily, making sure that those folks in crisis aren't able to go procure a firearm and use it for any number of reasons, as we've seen in too many of our mass shootings, are things that are great about this bipartisan gun security bill and will make a difference in Kansas City and will make a difference in Missouri. Now, of course, there's more that I want. I want things to be like they were when I was a kid in Missouri. When I was a kid in Missouri in the mid-1990s, to have a concealed weapon, you needed a permit. And a lot of people went out and they got their permits and they were law-abiding citizens and they proved that they knew how to handle and store their firearm. Today we have gotten rid of that. And so we have taken away tools from our police officers to be able to say if they see somebody who's walking around with a gun on the street, right, to say, hey, do you have a permit for it? Do you need to have it? And in many situations, indeed what we see in our entertainment districts, and I hear from officers all the time who say, we see guns in cars, we see guns on persons, and we can't do anything about it because those people, we can't suspect that they've committed a crime because they're following what Missouri law is now. That has been a mistake and it has led to more deaths, more carnage on the streets of Kansas City. That's the sort of thing that ultimately needs to change and that's not in this federal bill, it's not in any state bills, and until we start to do that stuff, I think we're gonna continue to see challenges with gun violence in Kansas City. Jeff City, typically a, a red town. Yeah. When we talk about uh, Republicans versus Democrats and very, very protective of Second Amendment rights. How do you, as mayor of Kansas City, talk to them and say, this is what we need? 
Here's the thing. I disagree with a lot of people on a lot of different stuff, and I'm sure the, the feeling's mutual, particularly when I go to Jeff City. But I do try to talk directly to them and candidly. I think there are certain things that don't make any sense. For example, right, we don't want to have guns in the hands of domestic abusers who have been convicted of offenses of harming their intimate partners. Work with us to make sure that we close things, like the boyfriend loophole, where we found a situation where folks who were in relationships, weren't spouses or weren't residents of the same household, were still able to get a gun after there was an order of protection or after they got convicted for harming, hitting their spouse or their girlfriend or their loved one. Right? These are the sorts of things that are a challenge and need to be cleared. And I think whether you're in Kansas City or Jefferson City, you see a problem with that. Making sure that we're using every tool we can to have guns out of the hands of minors who weren't given those guns by their parents or weren't part of hunting or something of that sort. Every week in Kansas City, we have shootings that involve teenagers, minors. Right? How can we make sure that we have tools and make sure that these folks don't have guns early, aren't getting them from gang members, aren't getting them from folks in the neighborhood, and aren't beginning a life of crime long term? To me, it's all about common sense. And I think what we have to agree on right now in Missouri is that there's a problem. There's a problem with the fact that Kansas City, St. Louis, and Springfield, Springfield as well, are some of the most dangerous cities in America. And what I would ask my friends in Jefferson City, including the governor, is do we want to have a state where that continues to be the case? I think the answer is no.